Drawing a hamster is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So we are going to start by creating a new canvas or picking up a sheet of paper on which we can draw. Now in this video I'm going to be drawing in an app called Procreate which is on the iPad, but you can follow along with pretty much any drawing tool that you have, especially for the first half of the video, it really doesn't matter what you use. Now for reference, these are the dimensions of the canvas that I am using, it is literally just the size of the iPad screen, but make sure that you pick a size that works with your own project requirements. And if you're not exactly sure what that means, I have a video in which I explain everything you need to know in order to pick you can size, so I will link that in the description below. And here I'm just going to start by putting my background color to this blue here. You don't have to do that, it is really optional. You can pick any color of your choice, I just like this little blue here. And we're going to start by sketching. So if you're working digitally, go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to sketch. And I personally like to set my sketch layers to the blending mode multiply. Uh, it just you know, it, it just comes out, the color just comes out a little bit better, especially when we're drawing on a colored background. I personally like to sketch in gray, but you can pick any color of your choice because we're not going to see the sketch in the final result. And if you're drawing on paper, make sure that the sketch, you draw it very, very lightly because later we're gonna go in and refine the sketch by drawing a little bit harder on certain lines. Now in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different brushes. So if you're using Procreate, I'm going to be recommending a free brush that just comes with the app that you can definitely use and it's going to give you really great results. And I'm also going to be suggesting brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle, which is just going to help you save some time and just get more professional results overall. So if you want to check these out, they will be linked in the description below as usual with a special promo code for the YouTube people. But again, it is absolutely not essential. You can follow along with whatever you have available. So in terms of free brushes for the sketch, you can pick in the sketching panel, how appropriate. <laughs> I always look for it, it is right here. You can pick the HP pencil, or if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the sketching brush, of course. Now, since we don't see the sketch in the final result, you can really use any brush of your choice, but I think these will work really well. And we're going to start by mapping out the general shape of the hamster. So starting with just a rough circle here for the main shape of the body and then adding another circle slightly smaller on top. So it's kind of like you're, you're building a, a snowman, I guess. <laughs> so something like this. You're then going to connect the two circles to create the back. So just a slightly curved line like this. And I personally like to flatten the bottom part of the head because right now it's really, really round. So for that, I'm just going to add a slightly curved horizontal line that kind of falls in the middle part of the intersection here of the two circles. So roughly kind of, you know, splitting that in half. Again, we're just doing a super rough sketch here. It really doesn't need to be perfect. It can have lines everywhere. That's totally okay at this point. You can also tweak the shape of the head by adding this little indentation on one side. So nothing crazy complicated here. And for the arms, you're going to draw this shape that is, I guess, half of a yin yang symbol or like a water drop kind of shape. And here you can see again, you can be really loose, it doesn't need to be precise. We're going to refine the sketch later. For the tail, you can just add a little ellipse. And I really like to sketch the legs by just drawing a super rounded W shape on the bottom of the body circle like this. So again, nothing precise here, just roughly sketch everything. And for the feet, I like adding two little ovals that are totally squished and are really, really small. I just think it's a, it's a nice detail, but I don't want it to be overwhelming. Now we're also going to add some ears. So for the ears, just go ahead and draw these. Uh, what could I use to describe that? You know, candy corn, candy corn chain on top of the, the head. And then go ahead and mark the middle line of the head, both horizontally and vertically. So this is kind of a plus sign. And that's going to be really helpful for you to add both the eyes as well as the nose. So the eyes, I'm just drawing two little ellipses here, pretty much the same size as the tail. And then the nose, it's just going to be another ellipse, very similar size, but just horizontal as opposed to vertical. 
For the mouth, I like to just start by mapping out the corners, so just the two little dots right here, and then drawing another really rounded W shape connecting the two dots and then connecting that with the nose just like this. I also like to add some little teeth, you don't have to, but for that you just draw basically a rectangle and then split it in half. Now if you feel comfortable, you can totally move on to adding the color already, otherwise we're going to refine the sketch and clean it a little bit just so we have a better idea of what we're working with. And for that, I like to lower the opacity of my sketch layer until, you know, it's paler, <laughs> that's the goal. And then using the arrow tool here, we can flip the sketch and that is going to give you a fresher look on everything. It's going to help you see what's not quite right. Now, if you're working on paper, you can just go and stand in front of a mirror with your, your paper and that's going to flip it so that you can have this fresh look. Now we're going to create a new layer, name it to clean sketch, and we're just going to go ahead and find our line. So we're going to go over the sketch and just pick which line we actually want to go with. So here there's no rule, it's really just experimenting and trying to find which, again, which line you want to actually use. And sometimes it might not even be a line that is actually in your rough sketch, like here for the belly. Oh, by the way, make sure that this clean sketch layer is also set to multiply. Um, yeah, for example, here on the belly, you can see I'm not necessarily going with following the, the round curve that I had. I'm adding more of a S kind of curve. It's not a full, uh, full on S curve. It's more of a C curve still. But anyway, <laughs> so you're just going to go over your rough sketch and clean it by picking which line you want to go with. And don't be afraid to experiment here, especially if you're working digitally. You can always just undo if you end up not liking a line that you draw. So draw a bunch. Find the one that you like and then just keep going. And with that, it is time for everyone's favorite, the secret password. So if you've watched this far in the video, please go ahead and comment. Oh, I didn't think about it. Let's go with peanut. So comment peanut. And if you're new here, you might be like, what, what, what's the secret password? Well, we've been doing this for a few months now and it's been really, really cool for so many reasons. One of them is it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me to create, you know, better tutorials for you guys. And it's also really cool to be able to see who's part of our creative community here on this channel because, you know, you guys know me, you see my face, you hear my voice, but I have no idea who you are. And whenever you leave a comment, I get to see your name, sometimes even your face. And again, yeah, it's just really cool to see the wonderful creative community that we're building here on this channel. So just go ahead and comment peanut and then we're going to keep going with adding the color. I personally like to keep both of my sketches here, so I'm just going to merge them with two fingers, squishing them together. I just like the 3D feel that the rough sketch gives to the whole piece, but you could just use the clean sketch if you feel more comfortable with that. And don't forget to flip your sketch back. For the color, we're going to simply start by creating a silhouette of our hamster. So for that, create a new layer, put it below the sketch and rename it to base. And you can use whichever color you want for your hamster. It is totally up to you. I'm going to go with this little brown here. And if you're working in Procreate, there's a really neat tool that you can use here. It is the Harmony panel. And basically what it does, it gives you uh, color suggestions based on the color that you have selected and the color wheel. So for example, here I have my blue background selected. And if I pick complementary, it gives me the color that is opposite on the color wheel, which is an orange. And you know that this orange is going to work well with the background. So I'm picking this orange, making it a little bit more brown. And that way I know that my hamster color is going to work well with what I have around it. So again, that is a trick that you can use, but you can also use whichever color you want um, to create whichever kind of hamster that you desire. In terms of brushes, you can use the hard brush from the airbrushing panel, making sure that the opacity is at 100%. Or if you have the illustration brushes, go ahead and pick the base round brush. And here, all we're going to do is we're just going to outline the hamster so that we can later fill in with a silhouette. And it might be helpful to lower the opacity of your sketch layer so you can actually see what you're drawing. So making sure your base layer is still the one that is selected, you're gonna go ahead and just draw the outlines like this. And here, feel free to take all the time you need. You can pause the video, I'm gonna speed up the video, and I'm gonna stop talking to let you focus. But really here, all you have to do is outline the entire hamster so that you can fill in the silhouette later. Now, once you have your outline, just go ahead and fill it in to create a silhouette. And don't forget to tell. <laughs> And I want to have a two-colored hamster, so I want to have this cream belly. 
And for that, I like to create a new layer and apply it as a clipping mask. So the way to do it, we're just going to create a regular layer by clicking on the plus. And then if we tap on the layer again, we're going to have clipping mask in the menu that is going to show up. So basically a clipping mask, whatever we draw on this new layer here, which by the way, we're going to rename to secondary color. Everything we draw on this secondary color layer is going to stay within the base silhouette that we've drawn. So that is really, really helpful to kind of add a little bit more color variation and just more details without having to worry about staying in the line. So here, like I was saying, I'm just going to turn my brown into a more cream color. And you can stick with the same brush, but I personally want to have a little bit more texture and grit in my drawing. So I'm going to pick either in the sketching panel, which I always struggle to find, where is it? Right here. Either the 6B pencil in terms of a free brush, that is a good option. Otherwise, if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the outline brush, which I know might seem a little bit strange, but it has not some nice texture and it is going to give us some really nice smooth lines. So this is what I'm going to use, even if it's not necessarily outlines. And here you can map out any kind of pattern that you want. So I'm going to map out kind of this bottom part of the face, I guess. So something like this, and it doesn't need to be super precise. You can then fill it in. And I'm also going to map out an oval for the belly. So something like this. Now you might notice if you have some grit in your brush, there are some little um, holes, I guess, in the color. So you can just clean, clean that up and fill it in if you want. You can just leave it as is if you like these like extra little dots. And I personally like to add extra lines, I guess, around the main belly shape. So I don't know really how to explain it, but it's basically just extra little curvy lines around the belly, around the face as well. It just kind of gives this idea that this extra collar is made of fur without having to actually draw the fur. And you can also clean any overlap that is unintentional. So for example, here we have this belly color on the arm, which should not be there. So you can just pick your eraser, set it to really any brush that you want. As long as it erases, you're fine. And just kind of erase again, any overlap or anything that shouldn't quite be there. So for example, here as well, I have the face that was kind of bleeding on the shoulder. So just cleaning that up real quick. Now, if you want, it is definitely not essential, but you can change the color of the ears as well to get more of a pinkish color. So making sure that your cream is selected, you can use again the Harmony tool here, setting it to analogous this time, and it should suggest you some sort of pink. But if not, don't worry about it. You can just pick your own and that should be good. And once you use the Harmony tool, you can always go back to the classic option here and change the color base on the square here. As long as you don't shift the hue, any color that you pick in this top square is going to work well. So I'm gonna go with this pink here and then I'm just going to quickly paint on my secondary color layer over the ears. So again, since we have a clipping mask activated, it is going to stay within the base shape on the hamster. So you can just go really, really quickly over it and then fill in your ears. And once you're happy with all your secondary colors, we're going to move on to adding details. Okay, so let's start adding the details to our hamster so that it actually starts looking like a hamster. And you can merge the base layer and the secondary color layer if you want. If you have limited layers, you can definitely do that. I personally like to keep them separate in case I want to change something later. And no matter what you decide to do, go ahead and create a new layer below the sketch but above your color layer and rename this one to details. This one should not be a clipping mask. You want to make sure that it is not stuck to the base shape. And we're going to start by simply outlining the hamster. And for that, I like to just color pick my brown by holding a pencil on the color and making this brown a little bit darker. I don't like to do hot lines in pure black. I think it's a bit too much for this vibe, but if that's what you're looking for, you can definitely do that. And we're gonna stick with the same brush. So either the 6B pencil or the outline brush. And we're just going to, like I was saying, outline the entire hamster and add some details. For example, here, we, where we're kind of losing the arm and just kind of redrawing that so that we can actually see the arm, even if we end up hiding the sketch later, which we're going to do. Now, once more, I'm going to stop talking, speed up the video, let you focus, take all the time you need, feel free to pause, and then we're gonna meet at the next step in which we're going to keep adding more details that are not necessarily just the outlines. Great, so once you have your basic outlines like this, you can go in and add extra little details. So I personally like to add some stray hairs like this on the top, I just think it's cute. You can also kind of show the different, not fingers, but 
add a little bit more details in the pot like this. You know, on this one, for some reason, I like adding a, uh, a spiral. I don't know. I, I just like it. <laughs> so you can kind of go in and add extra little details. And for now, we're not necessarily going to do too much of the face. We're mostly going to just be drawing the nose. I don't know why here I'm just, you know, drawing it myself. You could definitely use color feel here and save so much more time. And yeah, the nose as well as the mouth, but we're not gonna touch the teeth for now or the eyes, cause that's going to be the next step. So once you have the basic details laid out as well as the nose and the mouth, go ahead and create a new layer above the details layer and rename it to eyes. Now, I know it might seem strange to do the eyes on a separate layer, but just bear with me, I'm gonna show you why. And you're gonna pick a color that is not quite white. If you pick white, you won't be able to add any highlight later, so, you know, pick something that is almost white, but not quite. And then you're just going to outline the ovals and then fill them in just like this. Once you have your basic eyeballs, I guess, <laughs> go ahead and create a new layer above the eyes and rename it to Iris. Now this layer we're also going to apply as a clipping mask, which means everything we draw on this iris layer is going to stay within the eye shape. And you can pick any color you want for the eyes, I'm just going to go back with my brown here and make it, you know, much darker. But once more, we don't want a pure black, otherwise we won't be able to add any shadows on the eyes, which would be a shame. And here you're just going to draw the iris, so nothing complicated, and you can draw it wherever you want in the eye depending on the direction you want your character to be looking in. But I'm going to show you a really neat tip to kind of change that so don't, don't agonize over the positioning. Now the really cool thing with this kind of clipping mask setup we have here with the iris and the eye layer is that if you use your arrow tool with your iris layer selected, you're going to be able to change where the hamster is looking by just moving the layer around. So that's a really neat trick. It can help you kind of get the look and feel of everything right, because it is a little bit tricky sometimes to get the eyes to be <laughs> facing in the right direction. You can also use the arrow tool and set it to distort to kind of change the size uh, and the shape of the iris. So that's why I like to draw them on separate layers. It gives you a little bit more freedom into how to kind of position the eyes. <laughs> Once you're happy with it, go ahead and create a new layer, apply it as a clipping mask and rename it to shadow. And we're going to pick a grayish purplish color. Now we don't want to go with a full gray, otherwise it's going to look really muddy. And then all you're going to do is you're going to draw this diagonal section on the top left of the eye. It is just going to add a little bit more dimension to the eye as opposed to making them like really, really flat. And we're also going to create a new layer. This one doesn't need to be a clipping mask. It can if you want, it is not essential. I'm gonna rename this one to light. And you can pick this time pure white. And all you're going to do is draw this little circle to add so much more life to your character. You can see it instantly brightens it up and looks so much more alive. Now you can draw the eyes outline on the details layer. I like to draw it on a separate layer so that later I can move all the eyes, you know, very easily. So creating a new layer above the light. This one is definitely not going to be a clipping mask. Make sure it is not a clipping mask. And you're going to color pick whichever color you want uh, to use and you're just going to outline the eyes. Now I like to outline just the outside like this. I think it makes the eye feel more open and just brighter but you could go ahead and outline the entire ellipse if you want you can experiment and see what you like this is what i personally like and once you're done with the eyes outline we're going to group all of these layers together so that our file is really neat you can merge them together if you want but i personally like to group them so just swapping them towards the right and then clicking the group option at the top if we click on this arrow now we're going to collapse the group which is going to make the file look so much neater and you can also rename this group to eyes and now that we have all of our layers together in this eye group, we can use the arrow tool to move them around and we can also use the selection tool, setting it to freehand to select one of the eyes or one part of the eye and then using the arrow tool to change the shape. Now, if you have clipping mask, they don't show up when you kind of change the shape like this, but once you exit, it is going to show up again. So you just need to get that in mind. And at any point when you have a group, you can just tap on the group like this and click flatten if you want to just merge all of your layers together. That's a really easy thing, but again, I'm going to keep mine separate. So the last little thing we have to do here before moving on to shading is adding the teeth. So I like to create a separate layer, putting it below the details layer and making sure that I don't automatically create a clipping mask. So just deactivating that. 
and you can pick the same color you used for the eyes and just then going in and coloring in your teeth. So nothing crazy here. I like to create it on separate layers as the details and then merge it for some reason. I, I don't know guys, sometimes my brain is weird. <laughs> and then once you have the teeth drawn, you can go back on the details layer and outline them with the same brown that you used for the rest of the outlines. And you can either keep these layers separate or merge them. I'm just going to merge them. I'm, you know, that's, that's fine by me. And then you're probably going to have to rename this layer to details again. Sometimes it, it kind of loses the name. So anyway. So at this point, we're going to almost be ready to shade. I recently like to add some little stray hairs on my detail layer. So I'm going to hide the sketch for that. Color picking the same brown as you use for the outlines. And with the same brush, just going in and adding, you know, one, two, three hairs, in little groups like this. Again, just to show this idea of fur without actually going in and drawing a bunch of fur. So you can do that on your own. You can totally skip this step if you want. And once we're done, we're going to move on to shading. So for the shadows, we are going to create another layer. Yes, I know. <laughs> and we're going to put it below the details layer, but above the color. And this one is also going to be a clipping mask. So oops, not off lock, right here, clipping mask. There we go. So we want it to be applied to the base. And we're going to rename this layer to shadow or shadows. <laughs> And this one, we're going to set the blending mode to linear burn. And for now, we're going to set the opacity around 50%, but we can always tweak that later. So, you know, don't worry too much. And we're going to go back to our grayish purplish color that we used for the eyes, maybe making it a little bit more pink this time. I don't know. <laughs> Just going with the flow. And for the brush, you can use either the 6B pencil from the sketching panel, or if you have the illustration brushes, go ahead and pick the basic texture. Now here, I'm going to imagine that the light is coming from the top right of my canvas right here. So all the rays would be hitting the hamster like this, which means all this left section is going to be in the shadow. And so you can just go in and since we have a clipping mask, again, you can just brush over your shape without having to worry about staying within the line and just add your shadows on the left side of your character. So you're going to have kind of two types of shadows, I guess. One is going to be just general shadow of where your the light is not you know, reaching. <laughs> and that's going to be mostly on the left. You're also going to have shadows whenever there's an overlap. So a good example of that is pretty much the head overlapping the body. It's not necessarily on the left side of your character, but the head is casting a shadow on the body. So you would obviously draw a shadow there. Now, don't worry about making your shadows perfectly accurate in terms of like physics and everything. That's not necessary. As long as it looks believable and it adds a little bit more dimension to your character, that's already really, really good. So just play around, experiment with stuff. You can always undo or erase if you're not happy. But yeah, I know shading can be a little bit tricky sometimes and I know some people are a bit nervous about that and it's okay. Just experiment with it and eventually it's going to look right. So take all the time you need to roughly map out your shadows and once you're happy, we're going to move in to blend them so that they don't look as intense as they do right now. So for that, you can use the smudge tool here and depending on how soft you want shadows to be, you can either use the soft brush from the airbrushing panel. I personally like to have a little bit more texture, so I'm going to use the stucco brush from the painting panel. And here you're going to, well, <laughs> just blend your shadows in. Don't try to create necessarily the most perfect radiant you want to have something that has a little bit of texture and, you know, life to it. And you want to find a good balance between hard edges in your shadows and soft edges in your shadows. And for that, I have a really simple rule of thumb. It doesn't apply in all the situations, but it's a good thing to remember if you're starting with shadows. But the shadows that are created by an overlap, so like the arm over the body or the face over the body, are going to have hard edges or harder edges. And then the other shadows that are just created because the light is not reaching that point tend to have softer edges. And again, that is not a universal truth. It depends on the light context your character is in, but it can be helpful, again, if you're just getting started and you're not exactly sure how to add variety. That's a good way to do it. Now, you might notice that with your shadows, the outlines that we've created that are in the shadows are kind of lost now. So we're going to remedy to that. I'm going to show you a neat trick in just a few seconds, but before that, we're going to add the lights. So create a new layer above the shadows, apply it as a clipping mask and rename it to lights. For some reason, I always struggle renaming my layers, but we always get there in the end. <laughs> 
And we're going to set the blending mode to add, which is going to make all of your colors look like lights. But it is really powerful, so lower the opacity around 20% for now. We can always go back and tweak it later. In terms of color, I like to go with a super bright yellowish orange color, kind of like it's the sun hitting the character. And we're going to stick with the same brush. And what I personally like to do is just adding an outline on the side from which the light is coming. So here from the top right. So I'm just kind of outlining every shape that is on the top right, if that makes sense. <laughs> or outlining the top right section of every shape. I'm not exactly sure how to explain it, but look at the video and you'll understand really quickly what I'm trying to say. So nothing crazy here and we're not going to blend this in. It really helps, I think, to make the character pop from the background. So that's... You know, that's, that's my way of doing lights. It's more like highlights than lights, so I, I, I just like it. And experiment here. I know I keep saying to experiment, but that is really the key into creating your own illustrations and your own style is finding what you like. So experiment. <laughs> I personally also like adding some little ovals, like highlights on the cheeks, just like this. It is optional as everything is, but I personally really like it. And once you're happy with your lights, we're going to fix the outlines and the shadow. So to do that, you can just select your details layer and swipe with two fingers towards the right, which is going to activate alpha lock. If you can't do it for some reason, you can activate it manually by just tapping on a layer and selecting alpha lock. Now, everything we draw on this details layer is going to stay within the shape that we already created here. So it is a little bit like clipping mask, but it is on one layer as opposed to multiple layers. And you're going to color pick the shadow color on your hamster and then make it even darker. And with any brush of your choice, you can just then go in and change the color of your outlines. So that's a really, really neat trick to just add a little bit more, you know, color variation, of course, but also just kind of making your outline look good, even if they are in the shadows. So just go over all the outlines that are, well, in the shadows with this darker color to make them pop some more. I'm also going to change the color of the nose, so again, just kind of coloring over the nose. Make sure that you don't go over the, the uh, teeth like I did though, otherwise it's going to be really, really strange. And we're going to make this color even darker and then color in just the bottom part of the nose to add some shadows on the nose. And you can also color pick the color of the teeth, just to add this highlight like this on the nose. You can also kind of change the color of the outlines for the ears if you want. It is not optional in the example, I didn't do it, but you would just color pick the pink, make it darker, and then just go over the outlines like we did for the rest of the hamster. Now, I really like having a lot of texture on my illustrations, so I personally like creating a new layer up of the light layer, renaming it to freckles. It's not the right word, but that's, you know. That's going to be close enough. <laughs> and this layer, it is going to be a clipping mask and you might want to put the blending mode to add as, again, just lowering the opacity because it's really intense, but you can experiment and finding a different blending mode here. Honestly, there is no rule. And you're just going to go back and pick one brown or one color that seems like it was from the hamster. It doesn't need to be the exact same. And in terms of brushes, you can go in the element panel, picking the driven snow right here. This is a bit big, but make it smaller. And then you can kind of add like little freckles, although they're not freckles because they're not on the face and it's on the hamster, but you know, <laughs> you get the idea. But if you have the illustration brushes, go ahead and pick the freckle brush, making it smaller, and then you can just sprinkle them over. That's too small. <laughs> you can just sprinkle them over your illustration and it adds a lot of texture. Right now the opacity is way too high, but we're going to lower it later. And you're going to see it's just a really quick way, again, of adding texture to your illustration, bringing it to life without having to spend a whole lot more time. So you can see if we lower the opacity here, they blend in really well and yeah, they just add this nice little touch. And you can stop here, but I'm going to show you a way to create a really simple background. And for that, I like to just group all of my hamster layers together. So that is, again, just a little bit more neat and easy to move around. So I'm going to rename this group to hamster. And then we're going to create a new layer, putting it below the hamster layer and renaming it to background. I'm a bit lazy, so I'm just going to rename it to BG. <laughs> now you can draw whatever kind of background you want here. I'm going to pretend it's a very simple cage. And for that, I'm going to stick mostly with colors that are the same as the background, like solid color. So just color picking that and making it slightly darker. And in terms of brushes, you're going to go back to either the 6B pencil or the outline brush. 
and I'm just going to simply start by creating a rectangle in the bottom part so you know bottom fourth or third of your canvas and this rectangle we're going to fill it in with the base color so this is basically the base of the cage basically the base wow <laughs> you can then create little horizontal lines like this and if you're using procreate if you hold your pencil on the screen it is going to create a perfect line that you can move around which is super helpful because you can draw a real quick line that is going to be all wobbly and then just hold your pencil and procreate is going to make it right and straight for you so just go over the entire top part and add this kind of cage pattern which is horizontal lines So once you're done with that, we're going to add even more elements to the background, like a water bottle. So for that, just go ahead and color pick your background blue, making it lighter this time. So almost white, not quite. And you can create a new layer above the background layer, just, just so it's easier to move stuff around if you want. And in my case, I just noticed my hamster is not in the middle, so I'm going to select the hamster group. And then with the arrow tool, I'm going to put it back in the middle where it belongs. And then I'm going to go back to my new layer, which is just layer 17, I forgot to rename it and create a rectangle and same thing as for lines if you hold your pencil you're going to have a nice shape created by procreate and if you tap with a secondary finger it is actually going to create a perfect rectangle so once you're done creating that you can use your eraser and erase a little curve at the top to make it less like a block <laughs> and more like a cylinder so something like this and then we're going to draw the bottom part which is going to be the same color as the base of the cage so for that, no rule, I'm just going to pretty much add a rectangle that has curved edges. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that. Around the bottom part of the bottle like this. And here you can't use color fill because there's already a color underneath it. It would change the entire color of the entire bottle. That's not what we want. So you can just fill it in manually and that way you get some texture as well. And then we're going to draw this, I guess, straw part. <laughs> but since the color is the same as for the background, you might want to hide the background layer just for a little second so that you see see what you're drawing and yeah just kind of a straw shape I guess that you can then fill in and before we had the details on the bottle I'm gonna go ahead and draw a little wheel here at least just half of a wheel with half a circle you can hold a pencil tap with a second finger and it's going to create a perfect half circle that you can then fill in with your color and oops I had a little gap here at the top so I'm just gonna fix that and then we can fill it in and you can also color pick the lightest part of your bottle to add a little bit more detail on the wheel. So I like to just add kind of a outline, I guess a really thick line just to show the thickness of the wheel itself. So again, just holding your pencil and you can experiment with a secondary finger tap or not seeing what you prefer. And at this point, we're going to start adding the extra details and the outlines and everything. So color pick the darkest blue that you used so far and make it even darker. Make your brush smaller and then you know what to do. Just add the outlines. So I personally like to fully outline the entire bottle. So just like this, nothing, you know, <laughs> it's not rocket science. Just outlining the entire bottle. Oops, here I made a mistake though. I'm saying it's not rocket science and then I mess it up. <laughs> Make sure that this little straw part here is going over the bottom part like this. And you might want to show the opening. And usually there's kind of a little ball in here. So you can kind of draw this little ball like this. And then you can draw the bottom line like this. So, you know, I say it's not complicated and then I mess it up. So hopefully <laughs> you guys can figure it out better than I do. And you also add some little graduation line on the bottle itself. So I like to just split the bottom in half, then split the half in half, and then split the half in half again. <laughs> and you might also want to add some outlines on the wheel. So nothing crazy here. Again, you can experiment with tapping with a secondary finger or not, seeing what suits your curve the best. And you can see here, I'm personally not really worrying too much about having a perfect outline. It's okay if, you know, some color is bleeding out or is not quite in, that's totally fine. You can also add some supporting branches for the wheel. So, you know, just something simple like this. And at this point, you should be able to um, activate your background layer again, because we have the outlines, we're going to be able to see all the elements really nicely. And at this point, the last thing we have to do is to create a layer, or a layer, sorry, a shadow below the hamster. So create a new layer, <laughs> rename it to shadow. And you're gonna stick with the same blue, which is going to help bring the whole piece together, make it more coherent. 
and you're just going to draw a really quick ellipse and then filling this ellipse in. And the beauty of having it on a separate layer is that you can use the arrow tool here, set it to distort, and then you can move your shadow around, change the shape, and just find something that you like. And if you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to draw more cute animals, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that, how to draw more cute animals. But before that, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and then click on the link right here and help me do there.